Hey everybody, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio. Back in the studio today. Today I want to share with you a little bit about how the traditional analog studio workflow and signal flow happened. Because that applies to those of you that are interested in doing the hybrid studio thing or hybrid mixing setups. So I'm going to start out with that, just give an overall explanation, and I'm going to do a few more videos getting into how the consoles worked and things like that. But today it's just the overall view of how the console and the tape machine in particular work together to have a seamless workflow in the analog style studio. So let's look at this simple diagram of how the traditional analog studio is set up. There's a signal flow between the console and the tape machine. Now I've got an analog tape machine here, but this could be a Lesis ADATS or a Tascam DA88 synced together or something like that. But this is a traditional tape machine style workflow. So your bus outputs and your direct outputs feed the tape machine inputs. Now why would you use a bus instead of a direct output? Because the direct output comes straight out of the channel and you send that individual thing to whatever track you want. Well a bus output can be used if you wanted to combine several channels like say you've got a drum set with five toms and you don't want to use five separate tracks for those you can send those to a stereo pair of subgroups or buses with the panning like you want and to two tracks on the tape machine by using a bus output instead of a direct output although it does put more circuitry in your signal path also on many of the large format consoles and back in the old days the buses were just used as a really easy way to route directly to that track a lot of those large format consoles had 16 or 24 buses with bus routing switches at the top of the channel strip so that you could easily send that track to whichever track on the tape machine via that bus. So then your tape outputs, they come back to the console on something called tape return. Some consoles call this monitor inputs. And obviously I just put them down here so that they would fit in the graphic, but they would also be on the back of the console and these bring all of the separate tape tracks back and they also bring back tracks that are being recorded because the tape machine is going to pass the signal as it's being recorded back and it comes back to the tape return if you remember during the big signal flow diagram I talked about the tape machine passing the signal that's being recorded through to the tape output to go back to the monitor or tape return channels on the mixer well the tape machine if it's in all input mode that's what it does it's going to pass whatever comes into tape input number one straight to tape output number one so you can monitor that back on the console and set up your mix and set up your session for your musicians with the tape machine in auto mode What's going to happen then is the tracks that are armed and when they're being recorded on are going to pass that signal to the output and back to the monitor or tape returns on the console. When they're not being recorded, they're going to play back whatever's already on these tracks that are armed. With the tape machine in repro mode, if it has a repro head, because some of like the smaller Tascams and Fostexes that they made were only two head machines and did not have a dedicated repro head. But the repro head, basically that's used for the final mix. And it's also used to create delays where you play something back that's recorded off of the repro head, which is a little bit later in the tape path, so you get a slap back delay effect from that. So for a good example, let's take a look at this Sony MCI JH24 remote control with the auto locator section up here. We're going to skip that for today because we're mainly talking about the tape switching, which is down here. So these are the master switches to change the switching on the machine globally. Right now the tape button is pressed down which is telling all 24 tracks of this machine to play back off of the repro head and send that signal to the output of all 24 tracks. 
Then you've got a master input button here that puts all of the channels in input mode, which passes the signal coming in the input straight through the output. And it's useful for setup and getting levels and things like that in the studio. And you could also set it to input mode and pass audio through the machine to pick up the sound of the tape machine electronics and send the output of the tape machine to your digital audio workstation interface or whatever you want to. Then you've got auto mode, which is where you're probably going to keep the machine or a machine like this. You keep it there during your session. And that means that all the tracks are playing back off of the record or sync head so that the ones that are in record are monitoring the input, which means passing the input through to the output while they're recording so the performer can hear the record, their performance or they're playing back off of the tape if they're not armed or if it's not in record and it's just in playback mode. And this is a simplified diagram showing the design of a split recording console. Your monitor or tape returns are up here. And again, usually these are on rotary controls. Sometimes they are on faders above the subgroup section. And sometimes you'll have the master section here, sometimes over here. It's just a really simple graphic of an inline console showing that the monitor or tape returns will usually be above the or part of the main channel strip anyway, like in this simplified diagram and then your bus section over here, which is kind of irrelevant in this picture. But I thought it looked cool. And I drew it. So there you go. That's an inline console with the monitor channels integrated into the main channel strips. This is a diagram, kind of a basic look at how uh, channels on an inline console work. At the top you've got mic or line input. Sometimes this is accessed via a switch to tell the channel which input to take. Sometimes the line input has a switching jack that will switch from the mic to the line input just by plugging a cable into it. So that whole section is your channel input which would have like your gain control whether you've got phase reverse and a lot of times a high pass filter will be in the channel input section too. And after that you've got your EQ and your insert. Sometimes the insert comes before the EQ, sometimes it comes after the EQ. Uh, you just have to read the manual for your particular console. Then usually you've got an AUG section that's going to allow you to take a split of the signal on this channel and send it somewhere else, like to an effects unit or to a headphone mix. Then you've got your routing matrix that just tells the channel whether to go to a subgroup or to the main left-right mix group and your fader and a lot of times you'll have a direct output. These are usually post fader but in some rare cases you may have a pre fader direct output and so the level for a pre fader direct output would be more determined by your input gain setting and not affected by the fader. And then you've got the monitor section where your tape input comes in here and on some consoles like split consoles this will be a whole separate section over to the right hand side of the console but on an inline console this will be integrated into the main channels but it's not actually part of the signal flow in the main channel it just has a tape input that comes into the monitor or tape return section on the channel and these will usually have at least gain and pan and then they have their own monitor master in the master section which on some consoles, most of them nowadays, or, you know, they don't make a lot of analog consoles now, but the more recent ones, this monitor could be merged with the main mix so that you'd get a whole lot more extra inputs for mix down. And this is the Allen & Heath System 8. It's a split design console, and the tape return or monitor channels are over here above the subgroup. Here's the Allen and Heath System 8 and showing you that the tape returns or monitor channels on this console being a split design, they're here at the top with aux sends and pan controls for each one and then the tape buttons turn them on and off. They otherwise receive the output of each of the subgroups. So you can use this section for multiple things on this console. This is the Soundtracks Topaz Project 8 recording console. 
this is an inline console and the monitor channels are right here included in the main channel strips that's these red knobs this is a close-up of the soundtracks topaz recording console and these are the monitor channels that are integrated into the main channel strips that I showed you in the last picture from far away zoomed in here on the auxiliary send section of the soundtracks topaz project 8 so we can see that the tape returns or monitor channels on an inline console usually have buttons in the auxiliary send to give them access to at least two of the aux sends like here on the topaz you've got this monitor button for aux 5 and for aux 6 that will allow augs 5 and 6 to take their signal from the monitor channels instead of the main channel. And here is a photo I took at the Stax Museum in Memphis and we can see in this picture of the famous Spectrasonics console from Ardent Studios that the tape returns or monitor channels are over here on the right 1 through 16 with the pan controls for each channel next to them. This is a very cool historic console. I figured you might want to see more of that console real quick. Well, I hope that gave you some information about how it's traditional or analog studios were set up. And in future videos, I'm going to get more in depth because I know I left out certain things. I didn't talk about the inserts or the sins, the auxiliary sins that much in this video. But like I said, it's just an overview of how it all worked together in general. And I am going to do some more videos on not only the finer points of the setup that I talked about in today's video, but also how that setup applies to a hybrid system when you're using a digital audio workstation along with an analog console and analog outboard gear. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you have an excellent day, night, evening, hour, minute, second, nanosecond, whatever it is you're having. Have a good one.